um, the truth about it is you cannot build any business or any enterprise without people working with you you can build something and you are alone doing it but the question like i said yesterday is the day you are sick or the day you go to the hospital your business is going with you to the hospital <laughs> if you're on the if the doctor give you admission your business is on admission <laughs> if you stay there for two weeks the business <laughs> is paralyzed <laughs> for that two weeks because it's on admission for if you understand what i mean so we'll talk about how to build an effective thing so somehow somewhere you would need to build a team for some people and let's go ahead we'll talk about hiring um, here we would like to talk about hiring how do you first hire the first mistake an entrepreneur make is hire wrongly if you hire wrongly you have taken headache and it's a headache you will live with for a very long time the second one is no go back the second one is how to create an organizational structure or a culture let me tell you the truth companies that have lasted for a long time the reason why they've lasted is because they have what is called organizational structure how do they do their things how do they work is that culture that sustains them if somebody comes even if you change the md the company will not collapse because they already have a culture we'll talk about managing your team for success we'll talk about motivating and rewarding employees it's not just a it's difficult to get a team but when you get a team how do you motivate them how do you reward them okay one of the secrets of keeping a team for a long time is knowing how to motivate them how to reward them we'll talk about coaching and development we'll talk about tackling performance appraisals many businesses in this part of the world do not do this and that's why you employ people and after a while they do whatever they want to do but when you have an appraisal system you say boy <laughs> you are going to work for me but this is what i want you to deliver in at a point in time every year maybe every six months we review it what did i ask you to do what have you done and that way it keeps everybody on check you on your responsibilities to him and him his, his responsibilities to you finally how to build a winning team go ahead please great the hiring process first of all we need to understand that all businesses irrespective of how small they are need people you need people who are going to join you to do whatever you are going to do the very first thing you need to do is you need to prepare a job description i don't care what it is if you have a mama put and you are cooking you need to have something like a job description you know what a job description is what the cook before ever you apply for the person so that as you are interviewing the person you tell the person this is what i want you to do you understand me then at the end you can add and other duties that can be given to you from time to time <laughs> the second one you do is specifying the required qualification and experience level the reason is because you have many people they don't have the experience level but they want the experience salary do you understand what i mean so you need to be able to say this is what we want in terms of the qualification and this is what if you want an ond you stated this is an ond who has had five years experience in this state it is stated right there and the person coming in the person may say okay there is no job in nigeria <laughs> and i have a bsc but i want to do this ond work and i think i can do it you are under no compulsion to pay a bsc salary because the opening you have is for what an ond for now and remember that at the same time you are helping him because he's gathering experience so you should never condemn yourself for that there are some qualities that should be sought out in the selection process one look at the level of experience and the quality of experience look at the quality of experience experience you can, somebody said you can buy a shirt in the market but you cannot buy rags in the market so you will need time experience is not bought in the market you need time you also need to look at the skills possessed by the employee what is the, the skill one of the mistakes people make in hiring is they employ out of pity or they say this is my brother or this is my in-law <laughs> that's the first calamity 
for your business never hire who you cannot fire what did i say if you hire who you cannot fire you will settle the matter in the village because they will call village meeting or family meeting for you why did you fire your brother-in-law then you begin to explain why you fired your brother-in-law this wife will give you we will withdraw the wife now <laughs> because you fired your brother-in-law so never hire who you cannot what fire good check for the skills of the employee it's not it's not this one is my church person you know so if i don't hire him pastor we it's not a question of pastor will or pastor will not it, can he meet the skills can the person deliver the enthusiasm about the business and the cultural fit of the employee sometimes some people are enthusiastic about your business do you understand me those are the people you can hire if somebody is not enthusiastic about it and you cannot find that drive that enthusiasm really really that personal drive because sometimes when it is difficult when you cannot even pay salaries for the month is that drive that will wake the person up in the morning go ahead for another slide please we're talking about how to create organizational structures here uh, let's skip this quickly because of my time okay there are different kinds of organizational structures that you have i'll just talk about four the functional structure when you are building your team of people you can decide to keep them according to the functions of what they do i give you an example typically whatever you want to do you will have maybe your production arm you know what i mean by your production arm if it is a restaurant your production arm is a cook the servants who are helpers the waiters do you understand what i mean but you may also need somebody who will help you with your accounts you understand because maybe you do not know how to balance you don't know uh, double balancing uh, system you don't know who bought on credit you understand what i mean you may need one person who is a cashier so when you are drawing up your organization so you put you put the production arm you put those people then you may have an accountant or maybe not an accountant or somebody you you have a cashier and all those kind of things so you have to separate your organization in that way maybe you are the md you have um, uh, accountants after that the accountant you have a cashier then maybe you have supervisor you have uh, under supervisor you, or you have manager you have cook you understand what i mean so you can separate your organization according to the functions of what they do next slide please you can also do what they call divisional but divisional is for big companies um, big companies like nbl uh, what they call nigeria breweries they are structured according to product line you have uh, amstel malta for example it's there are a number of people who work they work for the same company but they don't do the same products if you understand some people do they are in amstel malta some people they are in ferus they also do ferus if you understand but they are in the ferus product arm if you get so sometimes you can do that because but that's for big companies but you are going to get there someday so you get you've got to know if you understand because the issue is the people who are producing ferrules they are used to producing ferrules they know the chemical formula and all those things if you transfer the man from ferrules to go and do in amstel malta he can mix the chemical for amstel he's like do you understand what i mean so sometimes but it's for big companies a matrix organization is a mixture of the two if you have a company and you're working sometimes you can say we want to expand our business okay we're in enugu and we want to go, maybe go to unsuka or nightmare and you look at the organization you say okay this guy can help you, what you do in a matrix organization is you take one or two or three people you take one cashier you take one cook and you take one manager you understand me you put three of them together they will go and open a new place do you understand what i mean so that's what you call a matrix you give them a specific assignment B between this time and this time you have this assignment you have to deliver this that's what is called matrix then the last one which is a flat organization when you are starting newly it's best to have a flat organization there are some people <laughs> they are just starting a business they start they print complimentary card they hire a big hall they give themselves group general manager <laughs> that is on their complimentary card that is their name they put general manager a general manager b under that one you put manager 
And what are they producing? They cannot even pay salary. But they are managing generally. <laughs> if you understand what I mean. So it's best have a flat organization. And Japanese companies do this a lot. It is said that in the average American uh, American company, you have like 15 layers, if you understand what I mean. You know what I mean by 15 layers? From the last person to the organization to the MD CEO, you have 15 layers. You have MD, you have deputy MD. From deputy MD, you have general manager, you have deputy general manager, you have assistant general manager, you have superintendent manager. So <laughs> at the end of the day, and let me tell you the truth. The people who know the business are the people on the ground. Never joke with them. They run the show. When you create a lot of layers, they see something happening. But because they cannot tell you, there was something that happened somewhere. And there was fraud going on. And they, eventually when they found out, they said, ah, why did you not tell us? Oh, God, we don't get your phone number now. We don't know how to contact you. Do you understand? When you put too much layers, <laughs> when things are happening, it becomes difficult. But when everybody knows how to get to you, one text, one WhatsApp, one, you understand me, you know immediately and you can step in, okay? Go ahead quickly. I'm also trying to be quick because I'm trying to catch up with the time that um, uh, we have. Okay, organizational talk, talk, talk about the values and the behaviors that contribute to a unique environment in an organization. There are values in some organizations. There are behaviors. Let me tell you the truth. No matter what you preach, whoever is working for you is looking at your lifestyle. You can't tell people to come early and you come late. They will not. They will say, oh God, they come by 9 o'clock or 10 now. Me, I will come by 15 minutes to 9. And you come by 9, you think they came by, <laughs> by if their resumption time is 8 o'clock, they will come. So, whatever, and that's why you hear people say, I want to be an entrepreneur, so I will rest. I laugh. <laughs> I laugh because someone said, and he said that he got into the plane with Dangote. Dangote was in the first class cabin. He was also in the first class cabin. And this was a flight. He's a pastor. It was a flight, a Saturday night flight, because most flights from Nigeria to Europe, if you've ever traveled abroad, they travel at night to land in the morning. If you've ever, if you have not, it is coming very soon good so and he said he woke up in the night maybe 11 12 or something like that dangote was walking he went to urinate he slept he woke up again two or three o'clock the same dangote he was walking ah, 5 a.m in the morning he woke up he has got to urinate three times his job was urinating in the night <laughs> Meanwhile, no, I'm telling you the, this life story. And he said, he said, I'm not going to lie to now. I sleep. Because I get message to preach in the morning. He was a pastor. But he said, I now begin to understand why these people tick while they succeed. He said, throughout the night, the guy was walking. They landed about five, most flights in Europe, they land about 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. Because they leave here at about 10, 11 at night. It's a six-hour flight to the Europe most times. Okay? And eventually, he started thinking. Do you think you who is sleeping away your destiny? <laughs> and a man who is working it out at night. Two of you, when you meet, enter the market. We'll talk about competition in the marketplace. I think sometime this afternoon, uh, morning by 10.30. Do you think two of you, you will get the same result? Eh? You cannot. If you ever get any result, it's in the dream. And maybe it's a result to go and urinate another time inside the dream. <laughs> if you understand what I mean. So, quite sincerely, you, and it is that culture you build in your organization. People working for you, they take it. Do you understand it? They learn from it. It may be hard for them at the beginning. But when they learn that culture, it helps them to go ahead. Please, please, it's taking you so much to build that organization. Set a culture in it. So that people, when they come, it's easy to toe the line. The truth about it is, do you know what happened in Genesis chapter 11? The God had to step in to scatter the culture of the people. He says the people, they are one. And they do have what? One language. 
they reason alike they talk alike and the bible says god had to come down and do what scattered because organizational culture is powerful if you know how to harness it but to harness it you've got to build it see i don't know whether you heard about nasa remember when they put the first man in the moon something happened you know nasa now how many of you know nasa this national state uh, special agency in the u.s you know i think it was in 1969 john f kennedy the president of america in 1960 or so set a target he said before the close of this decade america is going to land a man in the moon and he created an organizational culture so that when some people came into that organization and they saw a cleaner they said ah, ah cleaner do you work here he said yes i'm mopping the floor here and they asked him ah, ah, so what are you doing here he says i am helping to put a man on the moon a cleaner is helping to put a man where on the moon the vision of the company is already he's cleaning but he's cleaning because his cleaning will help and really you can only get the best when people have a vision when they have a mission that's when you can tap the resources of the strengths of people everybody likes to do something that is bigger than himself everybody likes to achieve something that is greater than himself everybody likes the fact that when he does something his name is there and even when he's out of here people come in who work in the organization with that's why giving of plaques or giving of awards to your staff it has a very very big impact because even if the person is no longer working there the children can grow up and say daddy they gave you this thing what happened he says it is when i did this and it's when i did this and you can transmit that value into the life of the children that hard work so it speaks beyond them so you have to create things to consider in building a robust structure innovation and risk taking the first speaker talked about this and this is the degree to which your employees are encouraged to be innovative and take risk we live in a culture which is good we respect our elders but there is something about it if you are going to be innovative sometimes you need to cut transition if you understand what i mean sometimes you need to do think outside the box and and when you're